YouTube, this is Phil Rogers from the Phil and Florence YouTube channel. It's the day before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, by the way, to all of you. We have a lot to be thankful for in America, right? I have the slow and sear Kamado right behind me. And right after I got this wonderful cooker, I immediately got online and went to the SNS Grills website because I knew I was going to want some accessories. Well, today I'm going to use one of those accessories, and it is the brand new, just arrived rotisserie. Let me show it to you. A nice, huge stainless steel. You see how it's designed low in the back and high in the front so it can fit on the cooker and allow for the tolerance for the lid to close. But notice. It's got all of these uh, grooves cut into the metal. Those other slots are for these kebab holders. Now you can load up a lot of veggies and so forth on a rod like this. Your spit rod, two nice forks, and what looks like a very nice motor. Let me show you what we're going to do to set this up. If you remember from last time, we've got some other accessories in here we need to take out. We used a slow and sear on the reverse sear steak. So we're going to remove those accessories. We're not going to be using them on this cook. This will be a different setup. Take the slow and sear out, set it to the side. I'm going to take the charcoal grate out. We're not going to use it as such. What we're going to do is set up the kick ash basket. I showed you that before. I'm going to turn it and put the handles uh, opposite this way where the rotisserie spit is going to be in the motor and you'll see why. While I was at the online site at SNS Grills, I noticed several things. The kick ash basket was one, but here is another uh, accessory that I saw. It's a real heavy duty stainless steel kick ash basket divider. So let me show you how it works. Uh, this bevel has to match the bevel of the basket. That's how it goes in. This notch goes down over this crossbar right here. It lines up with that. And you just decide how much of a division you want in the bottom here. That looks about right to me. Because I'm going to have a drip pan located right there. And that looks like it fits perfect for what I want. The only thing left to do is pour some lump charcoal in. There we go. That should work just fine. And if we need any more during the cook, we'll just drop a few more in there. But I could have put the charcoal in the, in the bottom, you know, of the basket. Put the convection plate in and just had a big shield right there and just let the heat come up with the rotisserie running. This is one of those times where we will remove this great better bracket. So let's take that out. You let the back fall down so it'll go down flat on top of this gasket and then the front just sits on top. Let's see what that looks like. You put your rod in, turn it up where the cord and the switch is on top. Put that in the slot and let the slot of the motor go down over the flange. Now this rod is underneath the rotisserie bracket top where the gasket comes down and will fit like so. I just did some pulled pork not too long ago so we're gonna go with some roast pork slicing kind. This is my setup I'll be back here in the morning at five o'clock to light the fire put it on at about six o'clock should take about five hours four and a half to five hours and then we'll take it off and let it rest for an hour and we ought to be pretty close. So I'll see you in the morning. I've been working on this bone. I about got it cut loose. I don't need all this fat on here since this is going to be a pork roast. So I'm just going to kind of take most of this fat off of here. 
We'll put some uh, mustard on here. I like mustard just fine. I'm gonna go ahead, these, these rubs I'm gonna use, they don't have any uh, salt in them. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some salt. I'm going with Not Just For Beef by s, &S Grills and Rocky's Rub. But Dave told me a combination of these two was real good. First, I'm going to put some extra pepper on. Now what we're going to do is truss this thing up. We got a half a dozen pieces of 18 inch to 20 inch string. Alright, let's do it again. One, two, three. Pull it tight. That third time around helps hold it. I don't know why that slipped. But, we're doing good. I think that'll work. Here's a stuff that in there. I might uh I might one put one a uh, long ways. Down here, one, two, three. Pull it taut. Time not. All right, we're good to go now. Now, you got to worry about it flopping all around. Okay, here it is. All truss up and on the spit rod. Day 31, it's ready. Let's go out and put it on. All right, it's time to put this thing on. Set this right here. Put my rod in. Let me check that thing, make sure it's on there. Yep, I need to adjust it. it down. Let's turn it on. Nice and quiet. Can you see that? Nice and quiet. I've got my probe in that slot right there hanging down. Can you see that? There's my fire. Okay, let's get this thing shut. Okay, it's at 279 on my uh, setting is 300, so it's getting back there quick. We'll let her go. We'll check back in a little while. Oh, that thing is running so quiet, you can't even hear it. Let's see if you can see down in here. Can you see it rolling? Our port roast has been on about a little over two hours. It's daylight now. It's looking good. I'm going to give it a little spritz with some apple cider vinegar. Refill the lump basket. It's a little small area over here. It's looking beautiful. Okay, we'll let it go another hour. Alright guys, this pork roast has been on three hours. We're getting close enough to put some glazing on there now. I'm going to be going on with the Robert Rothschild's Pineapple Habanero Glaze. So, let's glaze. Turn this back on and glaze it while it's running. That ought to finish off real nice. You got that pan under there to catch most of the 
sweet drippings. We're at the three hour and 41 minute mark. And I think we're ready to take this thing up and uh, cover it and let it rest. That looks nice. It's got a nice pretty glaze on it. Now let's check that temp. 158. Yeah. Slide that off. Okay. Okay, well I'm just going to set this down in this insulated bag and let it hang out. Alright guys, moment of truth. I've had this um, in the cooler for about an hour and a half. Ooh, that's oh, it beautiful. looks good. Yeah. Let's cut this string off. See if I can get a slice off this long, thick end. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. We've got several people to do the taste test. They're showing up now. <laughs> yeah, my mom, so, my niece, my granddaughter. Just pick it off of that fork. <laughs> she does the dance too. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mama Hill. Yeah, that's good. That's a great chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick it off the fork. Off your floor. Fork. <laughs> Fork. Fork. All right, that's Janet's mom there, Mama Hill, we call her. And All right. Junior here. And Janet. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. All that's right. good and tender. We've got two turkeys here. I've got to carve up. Yep. I've got to carve We've those. Got, uh, how many people coming? 17? Well, in all, it'll be 23. Ooh. They're coming in shifts. <laughs> That's right, we got some coming late. Excuse me, it got hot in here all of a sudden. Uh, I'm going to finish carving this and then start working on these turkeys. Janet cooked yeah. today. Yep. Let's take a little stroll through. I mean, it's hard too. All right. And there's the matreon, the grand matreon of this whole group. All right. We're gonna bless this and eat it. So what do y'all say to all these people watching on Thanksgiving day? Happy Thanksgiving! Merry Christmas! <laughs> That about wraps it up. Happy Thanksgiving.